Okay, it's uh, 7.45 a.m. in the morning, local time, here on the, uh, the 30th of September, 2022. And I thought I'd just give you guys a demonstration of how the DC receiver sounds when, when 40 meters is still quite open. This is a direct conversion receiver. This is using just six transistors total. I think that's Radio New Zealand's AM signal. They're broadcasting for the um, for the Western Pacific, but I always hear them here too. You can hear that uh, AM doesn't come through very well on a DC receiver, and I think it's essentially the same problem why that explains why double sideband doesn't come through well on a DC receiver. There's some distortion because the phase of the oscillator, which is supposedly replacing the carrier, is out of phase with the carrier coming in from the transmitter and out of phase with the uh, with the uh, sideband. So I can get it to zero beat, but it still doesn't sound quite good. That's pretty cool. It's coming in on 40 meters, coming in all the way from from New Zealand direct, not via one of the relay stations. CW signals there. He's looking for check-ins on a net. Q and I, he's got nil.
K4ZXM. But here's some CW. I, I don't I don't get the entire I only get the the upper portion of the CW band. Just because the tuning range of this I, I kind of concentrated on the um, on the side band portion of the band. that I did this morning was I took out the um, little pot. I had a, a pot at the uh, junction of the two diodes, but that's really necessary only on the uh, on transmit side when you're using this um, mixer circuit as a balanced modulator. And it, it that on transmit, it'll help you kind of null out the, uh, the carrier, but it doesn't really do anything and it's not necessary on, on receive. I did a couple other experiments too. I tried taking the RF and putting it in on the port that is the, the junction of L2 and L3. And then I tried taking the audio off of this port, which is the junction of the two diodes. And it just didn't seem to work as well, so I went back to the original configuration. So right now, I'm taking, well, the RF comes in through the, the little bandpass filter, an RF amplifier comes into the junction of the two diodes. The uh, VFO signal comes in this way, goes to the primary of the transformer, and then audio comes out, I'll show you. Oops, I'll pick this thing up. Audio comes out here, which is the junction of L2 and L3, and then goes to this little AF preamp, which is an FET, and then from here goes down through this pot to two amplifiers in an AF amplifier and on to the speaker. So it's it's real simple stuff. And I think it's working okay. One of the things I might do is I might move the um, this pot off the um, audio amplifier and put it at the antenna terminal. Sometimes on real simple direct conversion receivers, that's where they put the um, the kind of the gain pot. It's an RF gain pot. And it, it kind of prevents, I think, all of the circuits from overloading. So I, I think I'm, I'm hearing some signs that some of the circuits here might be overloading a bit. And if I put the pot there, that might prevent prevent that kind of thing. But let's listen a bit more. Mr. Marvin, so go ahead. Good morning to everyone in on frequency. November Sugar Four Pasta. Uh, good, uh, uh, good morning, uh, Jim, and good morning, Marvin. KC4 with DMS. Good morning. Somebody very friendly group. <laughs> you know, stuff at the left that the uh, taxpayers stay in to make them whole. You know, none of that. The other thing people don't realize... I'm not a libertarian here, but it's just a circle. Turn the gain down a little bit. Until 72 or 73, there was no FEMA if, or government assistance uh -oh, for rebuilding. Uh -oh. It sounds a little bit better with the audio gain turned down. So I might have been overloading the audio stages a bit. Wow. 
There's Radio New Zealand again. Back down, see if we hear any more CW down here. Like somebody signing off down there on the CW net. All right, so there you go. I think it's going along pretty good. You know, most of these receivers, I would say, kind of, kind of have to coax them towards better performance, and that's what's happening here. And um, learned a lot about how to make a stable VFO thanks to Farhan's design. And we're learning a lot more about how to use a simple two diode, one tri-filler transformer mixer. Ironically, it seems a bit more complicated than the diode ring mixer. And maybe we'll talk about that in a, in a future um, YouTube video. So please subscribe, spread the word, and uh, I hope you enjoy these videos. 7-3 from Northern Virginia.